Hello, Dr. Peebles and future CBE320 students. Today we'll be going through a walkthrough of how to use Aspen to model uh, the first step in the production of biodiesel, specifically the transesterification of a triglyceride, in this case, triolein. Uh, this here is a walkthrough of every step you're going to need to take to get through this reaction um, with a lot of detail on how it's done, but this video is going to be really more of a quick walkthrough of what to do uh, when you actually get into Aspen. As we know, um, biofuels and sustainable sources of energy are a an area of immense concern right now as our fossil fuel reserves do diminish. And biodiesel is actually being considered as a replacement for petroleum diesel. They share a lot of the same qualities, but biodiesel can actually be produced from lipid feedstocks like vegetable oils. Uh, the way that works is vegetable oils contain a lot of really high energy triglycerides. Um, and those triglycerides can undergo transesterification into um, fatty acid, fatty acid methyl esters, uh, which are gonna be your main product for biodiesel. Um, so the specific problem statement we're working with today uh, is actually sourced directly from some, a literature review I conducted. All of the values in this um, problem statement are experimental values, and we're specifically going to be looking at trialine, which is a triglyceride. All three of its fatty acid chains are actually going to be oleic acid, common in sunflower, olive oil. Um, and we're going to be looking at the transesterification of triline um, through the three reversible reactions that make up the production of fatty acid methyl esters. Um, this problem statement gives us um, some parameters within which to operate. Um, we know that there are three elementary reversible reactions. They are carried out in a CSTR. We know that that CSTR is being operated at 400 kilopascals of pressure um, and 60 degrees Celsius with a reaction time of two hours. We've got a liquid catalyst, NaOH. Um, those reactions have second order connect behavior. And um, we're specifically actually going to be looking at just for this walkthrough, this first reversible reaction. Um, and we know that for this first reversible reaction, our feed stream um, is going to be consisting of triglyceride and methanol. Um, and the flow rate of our triglyceride, which is trialine in the feed stream, is going to be 1,050 kilograms per hour. And we actually also know that the molar rate of methanol to trialine in the feed stream is six to one. Um, we our problem statement wants us to calculate the mass flow rates in the product stream of all the species coming out of the CSTR after this reaction. Uh, we also mentioned here we can use the NRTL property method, which we'll come back to when we get into Aspen. So um, in these tables, we are given our three reversible reactions. Like I said, we're only focusing on the first one for right now. Um, so that's triglyceride to diglyceride and the reverse. We're actually given all of our kinetic parameters as well, um, like our rate constants and our activation energies. Like I said, these are experimental values. They're from um, literature review I conducted, which are linked at the end of the paper under references. Uh, and with our parameters in mind, we can hop right into Aspen. Now, if you're a CSU student, you can connect to Aspen through um, the remote desktop and the Aspen VCL. There's some brief instructions on how to do it here. Um, I have Aspen open on my other screen, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer there. Um, but that problem statement, we're going to come back to it. Um, so it's useful to have it up in another tab as we walk through. So when we get into Aspen, uh, first thing we're going to do is create a new folder. We're going to go under user and hit general of metric units. This just tells Aspen what units we're operating in. The problem statement gave us units in metric, so we don't have to do any crazy unit conversions later because Aspen already knows what we want. The first thing we're going to input into Aspen is all of our species involved in our reaction. Um, I'm going to start with component ID. This is your nickname, so to speak, of what you want to call your species throughout the course of your simulation in Aspen. So I'm going to call trialine TG for triglyceride. I'm going to call methanol MET. And I'm going to call dialine DG for diglyceride. And I'm going to call fatty acid methyl esters FAMES. Then you're going to pop over here to component name. And you can either type in your chemical formula or the name of your, your component. So I've got trialine. And Aspen automatically pulls from its databases and pops up the chemical formula right here. I've got methanol, dialine, and my fatty acid methyl esters are called methyl oleate. And so I've got all four of my species here. These first two are going to be reactants. These second two are products. Um, and then we're going to hit next. These next buttons control the rate of, uh, at which you step through the steps of your action in Aspen. We'll be interacting with them a lot. Aspen is going to bring us to our method specification, our property method specification. Um, we were given this in the problem statement. It's, we're going to be using NRTL and then we'll hit next. 
It's going to ask us to run a property analysis. We're going to say, OK, wait for it to load. It's just making sure that all of our components we input make sense. And when it's done, we're going to hit simulation. This will bring us to a main flow sheet where we're going to put together a process flow diagram. The process flow diagram for our reaction is very simple. Along the bottom here, we're going to scroll along to reactors. We're going to hit CSTR and drag it on the screen. Um, we are going to rename it CSTR because that's what it is. And we're going to give it a flow stream in and a flow stream out. We're going to rename them feed and prod for product. Like I said, very simple process flow diagram. We're going to hit next in this upper left hand corner. And Aspen is going to ask us, we see you have a feed stream, what's in it? Um, and we can remember from our problem statement that we know we have a mass flow rate of tri trialine coming in. So we're going to switch our composition to mass flow. The units are already in kilograms per hour. That's good. That's what we were given. We were told that there are 1,050 kilograms per hour of trialing coming in. We also know in this feed stream that we have methanol, but we don't know quite how much. Um, what we do know is that the molar ratio of methanol to trialine is six to one. So what we're going to do and what you can see in the walkthrough if you have it open um, is that we actually use the molecular weights of trialine and methanol to calculate the input stream um, for methanol, just a little bit of unit conversions, and that number actually ends up being 227.97 kilograms per hour of methanol coming in. We also want to let them know, well, Aspen know what uh, conditions the feed stream is coming in at. We're going to go ahead and assume that the feed conditions are the same as the reactor conditions since we aren't told otherwise. So that means our temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. Those units are correct. And 400 kilopascals. So I got to change that right here. Um, that is all we know about our feed stream. So we're going to go ahead and say next to Aspen. And it's going to ask us about our CSTR reactor conditions. Um, once again, our pressure is going to be 400 kilopascals. Our temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. For our valid phases, we're operating in the liquid vapor phase. And for our specification type, we actually don't know our reactor volume. Our, pro our problem statement only gave us the residence time. So we're going to hit this drop down menu and tell Aspen that much. And we can put in our residence time of two hours, once again, given in the problem statement. And we're going to say next. And then Aspen wants to know, well, what reactions are actually going on in the CSTR? And we haven't input our reactions yet, so we're going to pause and come down to this reaction folders and hit new. We're entering a new reaction. It is a power law reaction. Uh, and we're going to input our forward reaction. So here, these are our reactants. We're going to say that triglyceride and methanol react to form diglyceride and our fatty acid methyl esters. We know that our stoichiometry is one to one. so. We're going to input it as um, for every one unit of triglyceride and methanol consumed, there is one unit of diglyceride and fame produced. Um, these are second order rate kinetics. Aspen is smart enough to know that when you put in an exponent of a one and one, um, it can calculate that rate constant for you. And then we're going to put in the reverse reaction. So this is when diglyceride and fatty acid methyl esters actually go to triglyceride and uh, methanol. Same exact coefficients as the last reaction. Having that put in, uh, we can say next, and Aspen's going to ask us, what are the kinetics of these reactions? These we also know from the problem statement. So there was that table where we had all of our rate constants and all of our um, activation energies. Our rate constant was actually given to us in units of liters per mole minute. We want to switch that to liters per mole hour to match the mass flow rate of kilograms per hour. So we're just going to multiply those by 60. And I know you can't see the calculation, but trust me when you get uh, 5.34 for your forward reaction, our activation energy um, of 14.04 kilocalories per mole has not changed. Something we do need to note is that this reaction that rate constant is for a reaction operating at 60 Celsius. So we're going to put that right there. Then we're going to switch to the reverse reaction and input our parameters. In this one, we have, I just need to double check this number. 0.54 is our rate constant. And our activation energy is 
0.739 kilocalories per mole, once again, operating at 60 degrees Celsius. So now that we all have our kinetics for our reactions in, we can hit next and Aspen will say, all right, is this the reaction you want to be put in the CSTR? And I switch my reaction from available to selected and hit next. And we're coming up on the end of our process because Aspen says, I have all of the components I need to run. Would you like to run? We say, okay. Um, we give it a few moments to run those calculations. And then if there is an error, it'll either show up in this loading uh, screen right here. I hear I have no warnings were issued um, or it'll say down here where it says results available. It'll be something like there was an issue. Uh, we're good for now. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our results which we can do by clicking on stream summary. Our problem statement asked us to take a look at the mass flow rates coming in the product stream. So we're gonna scroll down here. We can look at mole flows, mole fractions. We're gonna look at mass flows. And here we can see that this column is the feed stream. Uh, we put in 1050 kilograms per hour and 227 kilograms per hour. That looks good. This is our product stream. We can see we get 720 kilograms per hour of our dialine coming out and maybe 350 of our fatty acid methyl esters. Um, and that actually concludes our evaluation of um, our problem. So if you feel so inclined, there are a lot of different ways you can take this. Um, there are three main components that make this um, reaction change a lot, and that's going to be the ratio of alcohol to oil, so your methanol to your trialine, the reaction temperature, and the residence time. So if you feel so inclined, you can definitely go in and start messing around with those, seeing how the composition of the um, product streams might change. Uh, you can also try doing all three of those reversible reactions together in one CSTR and three parallel CSTRs. Um, there's really a lot of fun ways you could take these Aspen simulations. So once again, that step-by-step um, -step walkthrough is linked in the description if this was a little quick for you, but thanks for sticking around and I hope you have a great rest of your day.